Today, we're looking at Birmingham Pen Company's Jeff Goldblum Independence Gray. Hi, I'm Adam and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, share the results with you. Now, Birmingham Pen Company's Jeff Goldblum Independence Gray is a gray ink. I would have loved to have seen them do The Fly. It was one of my favorite Jeff Goldblum movies. Brendel Fly, amazing. Anyway, to make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples, I put the ink into a different pen for a day, I then put it into a Noodler's Nib Creeper to take my notes for this video. Now, before we go look at the writing samples, let's look at the sciencey bits. Up first is the chromatography, and I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done, and what we see is a line that sort of stays a little bit in place. A very light gray pushes up into a brown with this beautiful blue across the top. And it really made me feel that this ink was going to have some real chance of some interesting performances. The one on the right I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. That gray line across the bottom is much more there. With only 10 minutes, the gray really set in. Now that's a beautiful gray across the bottom. It's not a bad ink, but I would think that that might have been a pretty neat gray here. It would have looked kind of like pencil. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it might be to clean from your pens. I let the smear dry for three days before I test it. Looking at the highlighter, it handles it pretty well. It goes from being an extra fine to about a fine medium. You can read everything that's there. It makes me feel safe in a note-taking environment. Water reactivates, lifts really most all of this ink off the page with only 30 seconds. We start to see some of the white of the paper coming through. It's still a little yellowish there, but that gray that was left behind in the chromatography doesn't look like it's going to become a problem. I feel like water's all that it's gonna take. Now, pen flush strangely did less than water did. But I think that water is all that it's actually going to take. The gray from the chromatography and a little bit of the blue is what's left with the pen flush. Bleach, as would be expected, is obliterating it off of the paper. But again, water is really all that I think this is going to take. Now, for the inks I've tested, I've found an average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Birmingham Pen Company's Jeff Goldblum Independence Gray has a viscosity of 2.4, making it normal. To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done on Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper with the extra fine and medium nib. For the inks I've tested, I have found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Birmingham Pen Company's Jeff Goldblum Independence Gray has an average dry time of 13 seconds, putting it right on the edge at normal. Now, let's look at the writing samples. I picked this ink up in sample form, and I don't have it here, and I'm not going to break out the paper towel and show you what a wreck their sample bottles are. Just trust me on that one. To keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet Medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet Extra Fine. Let's take a look at Clairefontaine. We have no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, and it has a lot of shading because it's got that like squeegee action of the stub. It's got really nice shading throughout, although some areas are very light and harder to read. The bottom of the G in Gold Bloom, the top of the D in Gold Bloom, a little bit hard to read, not horrible, gives a very nice effect with this ink. The extra fine, no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. It is a little, it's darker than the 1.1. It is definitely lighter than the medium. It took seven seconds to dry. It's got this like blue undertone that's very nice. The medium, noticeably darker tone, definitely into that black. It's an independence gray. It's black in some areas. Excuse me, gray in some areas. 
I think it does very nice in giving some color variation as a black ink. I don't go for black inks that do that a whole lot. I think this one looks really neat. The medium, though feather spread, halo sheen or shade, 11 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both showed us no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't get it. And a smear test, you could likely recover it. So Tomoy River. Tomoy River has no bleeding. It has ghosting. It's Tomoy River. The 1.1 has no feather, no spread. It has halo all over it. It's really neat. Really neat halo. So you got a gray ink that's got a, a little black outlines all over it. Nice. No sheen, no shade. The extra fine is a darker tone. Nice mid gray right there. Mid to dark gray. The extra fine is no feather spread, halo sheen or shade, 12 seconds to dry. Now when we get to the medium, the medium starts looking like a dull black. That dull black has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. It took 20 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both showed us no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't get it. And a smear test, you wrote on Tomoy River. When you smear it, you can't write it. It just goes away. Rhodia. Rhodia paper gives us no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 gives no feather spread, halo sheen. And no shade. I'm not seeing any shading in this 1.1. We, we had it with Claire Fontaine. We don't have it here. But it's a nice gray. It's a nice gray. It's dark enough to read. When it's, it does, it's not too light to be a problem on your eyes. The extra fine is a darker tone, a darker gray, with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, nine seconds to, to dry. The medium gets to that black. When you're on a wet pen, it becomes black. It has no feather, spread, halo sheen, no shade, 16 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both showed us no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't get it. And the smear test, you could likely recover this if you did smear it while you were writing. So black and red paper has no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1, very gray, nice. No feather spread, Halo, sheen, or shade. Extra fine. That, that nice dark gray, little bit of blue look to it. Very nice here. Very, really nice here. No feather spread. Halo, sheen, no shade. Five seconds to dry. The medium becomes that black. It goes on thick. It gets a little bit darker. Quite a bit darker. Quite a bit. Medium, no feather, spread, halo sheen, no shade, 8 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't get it. And the smear test says you could likely recover it if you smeared while you were writing. So Limone paper, still in that hunt for papers that are, or inks that are going to do well on this paper. And this is not one of them. Lots of bleed through. Lots of ghosting when it didn't bleed, like the 1.1. Now it's bleeding through, it's not touching the page underneath, it's not fully making it through the paper. It's just bleeding really deep into it, which is a sign of bad things. The 1.1. The 1.1 has feathering all over it. It's gross to look at. Don't use this in a stub on this paper. It has no uh, spread, no halo sheen or shade. The extra fine... Still has that nice gray tone to it. It has some spread. It has a ton of feathering. It's gross. Don't use it. No halo sheen or shade. Six seconds to dry. Gross. Ew. Medium. Now it's, it's a dull black, but it becomes a black here. It does have spread. It has crazy amounts of feathering. Disgusting. No halo sheen, no shade. Nine seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't get it. But the smear, the one and only thing this paper has is if you smear, you could easily recover it. That's it. Other than that, don't use that paper. I have a hard time finding any inks that perform well on that paper. Strathmore calligraphy paper. It's a laid paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1, which isn't. I must have wrote it with a medium. I didn't. That's the 1.1. It looks thinner. It looks thinner as a 1.1. Normally you look for, sp for spread. Here it looks like it sucked in and got thinner. That's so weird. It's so weird. 
No feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. That's weird. You might have to use a super thick stub if you were doing this because that's a 1.1. And it doesn't look like it. Nice medium tone with the extra fine. No feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, five seconds to dry. The medium gets really dark, turns to that black again with no feather spread, halo sheen or shade, seven seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it, we didn't get it. And the smear test, if you smear this, you can't see what you wrote to recover it. And that is all that I have for the writing sample. Instead of finding inks that look like Birmingham Pen Company's Jeff Goldblum Independence Gray, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. Now, while it's a very gray ink, there are blue tones, which you start to see because of with the chromatography. You see it in some of the chemical tests. Sort of made me feel like it was going to be there more in the writing. But I chose Krishna's Orchios, O-R-C-H-I-O-S, because it's a very nice blue ink. Before I give my opinion on this ink, I would ask, if you have enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if it is your first time here, I would invite you to subscribe. So, so what do I think of Birmingham Pen Company's Jeff Goldblum Independence Gray? I think it's a very nice dark gray ink with some beautiful blue undertones, just like we saw in the chromatography. And depending on your nib and flow, you can get some really neat variations in what's happening with this ink. This is a very, very nice gray ink, which is often hard to say. Thanks for watching.